We have seen two ways to compute a projection matrix. Let us see how this works in an explicit example. And once we, once we have our projection matrix, we can use it right away to compute some orthogonal projections. So let us give it a try. We have W given as a span of two vectors, and we have some vector y. Now first we want to compute the projection matrix. We notice that those two vectors are already orthogonal, but in order to find a projection matrix, we need orthonormal vectors. So we normalize, and we get our u1 and u2. And we can immediately form our matrix u uh, with the columns u1 and u2. Let's compute our projection matrix first in the way p equals u times u transpose. What do we get then? Now we put our u here, take transpose and put it next to it. And all we have to do is to compute then the matrix product. Let us do the first column. We use the row column rule. So we get a 1 over square root of 1 over square root of 3 uh, equals 1 over 3, plus 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2 equals 1 half. So 1 over 3 plus 1 half equals 5 over 6. That's the first element. And the second element, this minus 1 over square root of 3 times 1 over square root of 3, minus 1 over 3, plus that product over here, minus 1 over 3 plus 1 half gives us 1 over 6. Next term, uh, square 1 over square root of 3 times 1 over square root of 3, 1 over 3, plus 0, 1 over 3. And there you have the first column, and you can do the second and third column yourself. So there you already have a projection matrix P. Now let us do it in the second way as well. We can write P as P1 plus P2, where P1 equals U1 times U1 transpose, and P2 equals U2 times U2 transpose. The advantage is that then your P1 will be the projection matrix onto U1, uh, P2 will be the projection matrix onto U2, and the sum of the two will be the projection matrix onto W. So let's compute P1. So here you have your U1 and your U1 transpose. Again, we can use row column rule. So here we have our very short rows and very short columns. So now again, the first element. Uh, 1 over 3, second element, minus 1 over 3, third element, 1 over 3. There you have the first column, and you can do the second and third column yourself. Similarly for P2, but now you use U2. Here you have your U2, your U2 transpose. And again, we use row column rule. This uh, product, 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2 gives you the 1 half. Another product, 1 over square root of 2, times 1 over square root of 2 gives you another 1 half. And then 0 times 1 over square root of 2 gives you your 0. And you can do second and third column yourself. So there you have the P1 and the P2. Now we can compute some projections. Let's compute the projection y hat 1, the projection of y onto u1. You can do that now using your matrix P1. So here you have your P1, there you have your y. And if you compute your product, say the first, uh, first component, if you gives you 1 over 3, minus 2 over 3, plus 3 over 3 gives you, uh, in total, um, uh, 2 over 3. And you can do the second and third component yourself. Similarly, you can compute your y hat 2, the projection of y now onto u2, using your p2, so that equals p2 times y. So, here we have our p2, here again we have our y, and let's do the first component uh, again. You get a 1 half times 1 equals 1 half, plus 1 half times 2 equals 3 over 2, plus a 0 if you 3 over 2, uh, indeed. So there you have your y hat 2, your projection of y onto u2. And now you can compute your y hat, a projection of y onto w in two ways. You can use your matrix P. So this matrix P we found here and compute P times y, or alternatively your total y hat is of course y hat 1 plus y hat 2, two so you can add those two, and you can check the arithmetic yourself. In both cases you end up with this factor. So once you have your projection matrix, you can compute a projection of any factor on your subspace.